Basically, all you gotta do is go out and take a bunch of pictures of random plants with your phone. It works best on cloudy days or in the shade, just as long as there isn't any direct sunlight on your plants. Make sure to get a bunch of angles of each plant. The top, the sides, the whole plant, little pieces of the plant. The more options, the better. Open up Blender, and in your preferences, make sure you have the add-on called Import Images as Planes enabled. Press Shift A and bring in an image as a plane. I'm going to pick one at random. Holding Z, I'm going to select Material View, and then go to the top view by pressing 7. Tabbing into Edit Mode, I'm going to press K to select the Knife tool. Now you can click around the image and cut out pieces of the plant. This doesn't have to be anywhere near perfect. Go ahead and repeat this process for a few more pieces of the plant. Once you have that done, select all the faces of the pieces you cut out, and press Ctrl I to invert the selection. Press X and delete only the faces. Now to separate the objects, we can go back into Edit Mode, select everything, and press P, Separate by Loose Parts. Back in Object Mode, I'm going to Shift Right Click on the base of one of the plants. Then right click and set the origin to 3D Cursor. Now we can rotate our plant from its base. After that, I'm going to go into Edit Mode and press O to turn on Proportional Editing. I'm going to select part of the plant and move it around. If you're moving too much or too little, you can press Page Up and Page Down to adjust the radius. Now I'm going to take different pieces of the plant and slide them around, rotate them, make it look a bit more chaotic than just a flat plane. Repeat that process for the other plants, and boom! These babies are looking pretty good, except they aren't babies, they are BABY! This is going to be one plant. Let's take all the pieces of the plant and smoosh them together. Make sure to rotate them a little bit so they're not all facing the same way. Looking pretty sexy. Now I'm going to duplicate this a couple times, and we're going to make different variations of the plant. We can just do this by rotating, scaling, and moving different pieces of the plant to add some variety. Feel free to duplicate objects, remove objects, whatever makes it feel different from the other iterations. Now for each plant, select the different pieces and press Ctrl J. This will join all of them together. Last thing for these suckers is the material. In the node editor, I'm going to bring in a translucent node. This will help light pass through the plants as it does with normal plants. Connect the image to the color socket, and then throw in a mix node to blend the translucency with the normal principal shader. Quick tip, if you plug the image straight into the displacement, then add a displacement node, make sure the image is going into the height value, and then throw a math node in between those, you can set it to multiply, and then dial in the bumpiness of the texture. Looks pretty good and would work well in the background of a scene, but might fall apart a bit if it was seen up close. So now let's explore a more detailed technique. Now I'm going to bring in another image, but this one as a reference. I'm going to find a profile shot of one of my plants and bring that in. In the Object Data Properties, I'm going to enable Transparency and bring the opacity down a bit, just so we can see what we're doing. Then I'm going to bring in a plane, move it away from the reference image a bit, and go into Wireframe View. Now switching to Edit Mode, I'm going to move this plane to the base of the plant. Selecting the top edge, I'm going to press E to extrude that, and just trace along the profile of the plant. If there are any parts that branch off, you can press Ctrl R and add an edge loop, then extrude your new edge. Go ahead and use this technique to trace the whole plant. Once you got that done, we got our sweet ass branch shape ready to go. In the shader editor, let's go ahead and add a new material. I'm gonna name this one trunk. I don't know what this is. Let's add an image and select the image we used as our reference. Connect that baby. Then let's go into material preview to see how awful this looks. Tabbing into edit mode, I'm going to press U, project from view. And then going into the UV editor, we can move around our sh branch shape to be branch to be on the branch, to align with the branch, to, you know what I mean. Once you got that aligned, we can go into the modifiers and add a solidify modifier. Give it a bit of thickness, then add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. Go ahead and dial in how thick you want the branch to be. Looking pretty good. Now we can go ahead and set the origin to the base by shift right clicking on it, then right clicking and selecting set origin to 3D cursor. Now once again we can go into edit mode and move this thing around, give it a bit of randomness and chaos and and anarchy and and uh looking pretty good. Last step for this plant is to add the little leaf bulbs on the top of it. For the last time in this tutorial, I'm going to bring in an image as a plane. And I'm going to select a top-down view of the little leaf bulb that I took. For this technique, since it's going to be more detailed, we're going to need more geometry to work with. So in edit mode, I'm going to select all the vertices and then right-click on them and select subdivide. I'm going to turn up the number of cuts a bunch. If 10 isn't enough, you can type in more. 
Now we're going to be creating a little cookie cutter for our leaves. So let's create a plane, move it up a bit, and delete all of the vertices except one. Now I'm going to move this vertex to the edge of the leaf. Pressing E to extrude this vertex, I'm going to trace out the edge of the leaves. Once you're nearly done, you can select the first and last vertices and press F to fill in between them. Now that we have our cookie cutter ready to go, we can go ahead and shift select our image, tab into edit mode, and pressing F3, we can search for knife project. Selecting that will imprint our cookie cutter shape onto the leaves. Now I'm gonna press C to bring up the circle select tool and select all of the leaves. Then once again, I'm going to press control I to invert the selection, press X and delete only the faces. Now that our leaf cutout is ready to go, in edit mode I am going to enable proportional editing once again, select the outer edge of the leaf, and bring that down to give the leaf a curvy shape. After adding a few more details like moving the base down and moving the tips down, this thing is ready to be plopped on the branch. Last step is just to duplicate the leaf a couple times and move it around and you gotta plant. Bringing these assets into a scene is actually super easy. All you gotta do is go up to File, Append, Navigate to where your plant blender file is, and bring in the collection that contains your plants. Now you can just drag and drop them all over your scene. They have such few vertices that it costs you almost nothing in render times or performance. If you want to have plants automatically added to your ground, like grass or flowers, it's pretty simple. Just go up to Append, bring in the plants you want to use. First of all, make sure your ground has a good amount of faces. You can subdivide to add more. Then in the object data properties, add a new vertex group. This is a map that is going to specify the density of our plants. Now we can go into weight paint mode and paint the density of our plants. Red means more plants, blue means no plants. Then in the particle settings, we can add a new particle system and set that to hair. We also definitely don't want to render hair, we want to render our collection. So let's set this to render as collection and then for the instance collection, let's set that to our plants. If they got funky rotation, just enable object rotation, then find your original plants, and scale and rotate them until it looks right. A little bit of scale randomness always helps, and there you go! Painting scenes with assets like these is always so fun, because it actually kind of feels like painting and it costs, like, nothing performance-wise. If you like the plant assets I used in this video and want to support these tutorials, I got a whole bunch more on the Patreon. Over the years, I've made a bunch of assets for personal projects. I'm putting those up on the Patreon. I'm putting up the music I make, textures, etc. And you can use it all in your own projects. I'm also going to be putting up extra tutorials, full-length tutorials, a bunch of stuff. If that interests you, it just launched. Feel free to go and check it out. You can always just subscribe for one month and then cancel it. Get all the shit you want. Any support is much appreciated. That being said, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and have a nice day.